Hi, welcome to the Gastroenteritis Blues. My name is Steve Whitman, joined by Dan Volpone uh, on a No Girls Allowed special uh, of the Gastroenteritis Blues. Emily Cannell is not here. Um, what is she doing? What is she doing? She is someplace. Yeah, she's somewhere. She's somewhere. Um, but she's not here. And usually she's not here when we have guests, but we don't have guests this week. Um, uh, nor is Drew. Drew's not here. Um, so it's just just the <laughs> two of the original three. Um, me and Dan. Dan, I start with a question. Who is your favorite current eagle? Oh, that's interesting. Thank uh, you so much. Mm, I've never really thought about it, but I... I <sighs> Man, I don't know. I feel like there's been so much turnover the last few years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like Devontae Smith, but I'm very excited to see Jordan Davis. So he might become my favorite quickly. Mm -hmm. Steve, who is your favorite current eagle? Ooh. You know, <clears throat> I am inclined to going, say. What is going on this morning? Oh, I don't know. I've got a lot of phlegm. I woke up fairly. We're going to get a lot of complaints then. about this. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I woke up this morning. I had uh, coffee and some water, and then I made myself my, my normal breakfast, which is egg whites, sweet potato, mm. my everyday morning, and then hot sauce. That's my everyday breakfast. That's, that's Stevie the Lips morning breakfast. Anyway, um, you know, I'm inclined to say one of the longtime eagles, you know, Brandon Graham, Kelsey. Oh, I know, I think Kelsey is, uh, is Emily's favorite eagle ever, um, and he's the best. Um, but I'm very into uh, some of the uh, some of the newer guys. Like AJ Brown, I think is going to become a people's favorite eagle very quickly. Um, Jalen Hurts, from a personality standpoint, absolute fucking in love with him. You know, I of course we talk about this every year, but I worry that he's just not good enough to be the quarterback forever. But um, uh, I we're going to talk about the Eagles in the second half of the podcast, but. Um, in love with with him as a human being uh, i think he's the coolest um and uh you know I'm, i i feel like i'm beating a dead horse on this one but i love josh sills so um yeah everybody loves josh sills all right um <laughs> the sixers actually did have one thing happen Wait, this week who? you love who? <laughs> i was making a joke and i felt like you weren't listening uh no, josh stills, I was, josh stills I... is like the undrafted rookie guard that they that made the roster and everybody was su surprised that i like it. didn't even think about it and then i was like wait who is he talking about yeah <laughs> i don't know who that is but he, he's a guy that made the roster all right a thing that happened this week is that uh, the Sixers went ahead when everybody was like, all right, they're not signing a veteran big man. It's like B-Ball Paul or Charles Bassey to back up Embiid. Well, they did. They signed free agent center, center Montrez Harrell uh, to a two-year deal. The second year is a player option. Um, in his tweet, Woj said, uh, Harrell brings more toughness to a team searching for it this offseason. He was sixth man of the year with Doc Rivers and Sam Cassell in 1920 with the Clippers. Um, uh, yes, this, this summer, uh, Harrell had charges of marijuana trafficking, um, that were expunged from his record. If after 12 months, Harrell gets into no further legal trouble, important to note that, um, of the arrests, that's a cool one that, um, we're pro that that's cool. That's fine. And, and also that shouldn't be something you get arrested for. Obviously he had a lot of it on him, so probably carry less, but, uh, you know, pro that, don't worry about it. Um, James Harden played a part in bringing Harold to Philadelphia too, both with his contract creating roster trip flexibility and recruiting him to take on the role of backup center with the Sixers. They have a history together with the Rockets. Now, everybody on the internet had the exact same opinion about this yes. uh, signing. Every, everybody it went to their yeah. Twitter. Yes, they all went in and they said, this is a great signing for the regular season and at the minimum uh because harold is good but i'm worried about doc rivers playing too much in the um playoffs um like harold's a really good scorer and in the pick and roll will be good with uh maxi and um harden but rivers infamously overplayed him in that playoff series that eventually got him like fired essentially 
uh, in the bubble. <clears throat> and uh, what's to lead us to believe he won't do the same exact thing here. Uh, basically, zero more minutes for B-Ball Paul when Embiid is playing. And uh, yeah, so I don't know if you have a diverging opinion from that, but that's essentially how I feel. Um, what do you think? I mean, I guess I just disagree with the Harrell is good. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't really think he's that good anymore. He's not a good rebounder on a team that desperately needed rebounding. Um, I like... I'm not sure, like, like, everyone talks about, like, oh, the Sixers needed tough guys. Like, I don't know, guys who just, like, like might, like, get in fights sometimes and pick up a lot of technicals doesn't mean you, like, play tough. Like, I think P.J. Tucker plays tough, you know? Like, does Harrell, like, I don't really know. Like, Dwight Howard led the league in technicals and, you know, pissed off, you know, Udonis Haslam to the point he used his only minutes of the season to – you know, try to fight Howard, but did that make him like a tough player? Like, I don't, probably not. Like, I think that it was kind of a criticism for a while that like as big as he was, he wasn't that tough. And so I don't know, like, I, I, I wasn't super excited about it. I, I think he's, he's fine. It's not like it was a bad value for the contract. Like it's a minimum. I don't care, get whoever, but the fact that, you know, you just know that there's going to be guaranteed minutes for him here. Um, I think B-Ball Paul might be better right now. And definitely if you give him a regu full regular season of consistent minutes would be certainly much better by the playoffs. So um, I don't mind that they're using their salary cap space on a guy I don't love or whatever. It's a, it's a minimum contract, but uh, I would have much, much rather seen B-Ball Paul and not just for like, oh, Doc's going to overplay Harold, but like, I just, I don't know. I haven't, I don't think he's that that great anymore. And I you know I'm not watching like a ton of, you know, Hornets games or uh, you know, or Wizards games, because those were the two teams he was on last year. But I every time I saw him, I was not super impressed. And uh, you know, he's he's not young anymore. He's 28, you know, be 29. And he's he, like I said, I, my biggest concern really is. He's not tall and he's not a good rebounder. Uh, and the Sixers so badly needed rebounding. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but I'm not, I'm not like super sold on it for reasons beyond just like complaining about Doc, which I'm not saying they're not valid, but like for, for his own reasons, like, I don't, I don't, I don't think that, um, I don't think that, he's a guy that I feel good enough about to like just give up on trying to develop B-Ball Paul to be a good player in the playoffs. Yeah. I, um, I just, you know, he was nine rebounds per 36. Um, I just, I would have kind of just rather than not done anything here. Like I, I just kind of figured out and then you can get somebody else. If you, if you like, if B-Ball Paul <clears throat> is just not very good or, or, or if you need to figure out a third center. Now, I do think that they probably think that they need three centers because Joel is probably going to not play 15 games and you need a, a third center in there. And I, I think that there's sense in that. The problem is that Harold is absolutely the second center. You know what I mean? Like, like that's, there's no question. They don't, he doesn't sign here unless he's, without a doubt, the second guy. And frankly, probably like, in a lot of cases should be because he's a, he's all the numbers about his offense are very good like uh when measured against everybody else at the rim he's great and he gets fouled a ton he'll get them in a bonus like um all of that stuff is real but like he can't he's not a good defender by any measure not uh on the perimeter and not on switches and not at the rim like he's just not he's limited and uh, he, he does, he's a high effort and high energy guy. Fans will, I think, be very into him and, and fighting, obviously, will help us get through the season. That's a lot of fun. I'm into that. Um, but, uh, yeah, and Doc's in love with him, and that's going to be a bummer. And uh, so, yeah, I, you know. Yeah, it's... Uh, and Vivo Paul is now the third guy. And, and 
it's just you know it's we all see this happening and 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 uh, as a reminder to fans daryl morey's the one that signs the players i know that yes. um doc has an affinity for this guy but but uh daryl is the guy over him on the on the chart also so, drafted him and yeah, Daryl like, drafted him. He's and, a Daryl kind of guy. Right. He's like he's a Daryl guy. Advanced yeah. numbers are like I think better than we would think he is. Yeah. Um, like you can't just oh I don't like this one. This one was Doc. Like, yeah. Ridiculous way to to, to view things. Anyway. Yeah, he has a Daryl connection too. He's got a Harden yeah. connection. You know, there. You know, we I don't think we can just say that this is like a a a Doc olive branch. You know, I think. I, that, uh, I think yeah. so many, so many people have, we've talked about this. So many people have decided that the way they're going to view the Sixers is good things were Daryl, bad things were Doc. Yeah, yeah. Trill and has a tweet. So it's Dar- like all it's the like, good moves are, yeah. Daryl is infallible. It's like, yeah. he is, he is like, uh, he is like a deity. He, he just sees things objectively. He just, and it's like, that's, that's so crazy. He's a, he's a human being who has like made plenty of mistakes over his career and plays the media really well and is playing the fans really well because they, none of them think that he can do any wrong. Yeah, you know, um, maybe it'll work out. Like maybe, you know, they could flip him at the deadline in some sure. tiny deal, you know, like, because I do think in the regular season, it'll probably be a positive, like, you yeah. know, he's, he's a high energy guy. He's going to like, score points for them in the regular season he's gonna like really run the pick and roll very like i remember this big zach Lowe article with uh harold and lou williams because they had this incredible pick and roll with the clippers yeah. and then they um, were both like unplayable in the playoffs but doc played them anyway. no exactly but what i'm saying is like that article came out in the middle of a regular right. season when they were both six man of the year like leading the pack and it was like they can't guard this two-man tandem. And, and of course, you can't play this guy, either of them in the playoffs uh, for long. Um, but that helps win a ton of regular season games. And AU wrote an article for the Ricky website about, like, that'll help get Joel through the playoffs and that'll help, you know, all of that kind of stuff will add up. But at the end of the day, in the spring, uh, you know, if that undoes the, the playoff success of the team, then you're you're in a bad spot so if he's still on the roster then and you're still relying on him then then you're kind of in a in a bad situation um obviously b-ball ball close friend of the podcast we keep in touch um puts him in a in a tough situation did you see his tweet that he is now deleted after this signing no oh man if drew was here he could google it um because i i think a, a website probably wrote about it but a um a a fan tweeted at him after this signing that uh who said to him like paul i need to know how you're feeling right now hashtag get rid of coach rivers right now and paul uh quote tweeted it being like i ain't focused on no one but myself so like him him quote tweeting a tweet that tagged or that hashtag um, like get rid of coach rivers um, and about the Harold signing was very funny. And it had like 2000 bikes on it. Do you have it? No, but I would like to say that I lost a most likely game where I said B-Ball Paul was most likely to try to get doc fired this year. That's funny. That's and funny. it has happened exactly as I said it would happen. And I, I, I didn't win that one, but I'm just saying. So if I, I wish I could, I could, I wish somebody had that because I, I had this bookmarked and then I saw that it was gone and I was like, oh no, Paul, Paul got rid of it. So um, smart of him to get rid of it. And I would imagine somebody, Daryl, once he stopped looking at yoga pants, he probably, you know, took a look at that and uh, have, you've oh, seen, yeah, yeah Daryl's yeah. Daryl looking at asses. Yeah, um, Daryl is <laughs> Daryl's fully fucking... horny on his man. <laughs> making trades and, and doing other stuff um so uh yeah i, I paul <laughs> paul yeah not not smart to respond publicly about the the sixers signing his i guess replacement but um paul's definitely a way better defender than him and probably a better rebounder but um definitely better rebounder 
yeah, so uh, we'll see. But Harrell is definitely a better offensive player. So um, we'll see how it shakes out. You know, people are going to get hurt. And uh, Bassey. So now the other thing that people have brought up is that now there are like 17 contracts. Um, will they make a trade to combine some of these guys on the team? Furkan, did you guys talk about last week him getting in a fist fight? Excellent. Excellent stuff. Love it. Um I, to me, that would vault him above Matisse in the playoff rotation. Now that uh, Furkan got in a fist fight, I neither of them should be in the playoff rotation. Sorry, but well, yeah, but when you need to put someone in there, it's got to be Furkan or Matisse. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know what you do now, but uh, I think that you know between Bassey and Furkan and Matisse and uh, Queen, uh, R.I.P. Queen. Um, Elizabeth, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think Queen's making the roster. And Bassett might not either. No, I don't think so. But do they just want to waive those guys, or are they going to try to take somebody of actual value and, and trade? Well, them? I mean, I think ideally there's some kind of two-for-one or three-for-one coming, but right. you know, there's no guarantee of that if that were guaranteed to, be, to happen already. So right. um, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm sure the Sixers try to find something um, and try to get value for uh, you know someone. But I... Uh, I don't know what will happen because the Eric Gordon trade, which I mean, Keith has reported Daryl's like still interested in, yeah. is is like really hard to do. Salary wise, it's just so hard to do because right. I don't think they're going to do it Tobias for him. It doesn't make any sense. No, it would have to be like yeah. Matisse, Furkan, George Niang. Like, would be a lot of a lot of players who played last year. Yeah, you know, now that now that they signed Harold, it's like, do they play any B ball Paul at the four, in which case you could trade Niang, but then you then you got no shooting, you know, then you're then you're really hurting for shooting off the bench. Yeah. So yeah, I, you know, obviously now we'll be on the lookout for what they do with the roster spots. But I would be kind of uninspired if they just like wave Bassie and Queen. It's like, eh. we'll see. Um Chams uh, tweeted about this in-season tournament. Is there another word for the in-season tournament? Uh, I think it's no in-season tournament. <laughs> Great. All right. And uh, current NBA uh, framework for the NBA in-season tournament, as soon as 23-24, which is not this year. Not this right. Year. It's next year. Next year. Then who gives a fuck? Well, we have nothing. There's nothing happening in basketball right, right. now. The Cup Games – are through November, eight teams advance to single elimination final in December. The other 22 continue with the regular season. All games of normal 82 game schedule, one extra for the final teams. And then the NBA and MBPA are still working to finalize the in season tournament concept which includes to be determined prizes for the eighth teams that advance to the single elimination round. Um, I don't, this doesn't seem, none of this really, uh, who cares? That's how I feel. I think it's stupid. Like you have, there's one NBA championship. And if you win, if you win the thing, if you win the second most important, uh, you know, championship of the season to me you won nothing like well why would anybody care about this like why why would the guys care about this i don't know if there's a financial incentive but like i don't know i don't really care how much money these guys are making like all except a few of them are already making an absurd amount of money and i it doesn't really matter to like oh tobias got another million for winning this tournament (laughs) like who cares like congrats to him i guess like I'm, I don't need to, I'm not like rooting for these guys wallets like I'm not like spiteful that they're making a lot of money but like it's not why I'm a fan like I'm a fan to like see them try to win an NBA championship and winning this tournament is not an NBA championship and whatever like minor incentive they get for it uh, I just don't care about like good for them but I think it's I think it's so dumb and it like takes away from like there's one champion every year right there should be one champion there's one 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 team that was the best and now you have a champion and like a kind of champion from the midseason i think it's so stupid well it has to have some sort of implication that amounts to the actual championship so yes, you would think 
Right. So it can't just be like a monetary prize because right. first of all, I don't think the guys, especially the guys that matter would give a fuck that much about it. Like, I don't think it means that much to them. Um, and, and also for the viewing public like that, why, why do I care about that more than a regular season game? Like right. I, I doesn't care. I don't care because guys have incentives in their contracts all the time. And I don't tune in more to see if Kelly Oubre hits another three, you know, right. I don't care. Um, but if it has something to do with like, if the Bucks win this tournament, they get to choose their opponent or something, mm. then that's kind of interesting to me. Like, but you know, they're going to win their first round matchup either way. I guess the East is deeper, but they probably will. And yeah. like to me, it's like, or do they get? Are they are they guaranteed the one seed then? But you can't do that because the rest of the regular season doesn't matter. Like you just yeah, sit true. Giannis. So it's like, you know, how do, how yeah, does the how would they even do that? Right, because it's mid-season. You can't say half the season for the winning team is now irrelevant. They're locked in. I don't know how they do it. I, I don't know either. I think maybe you get – maybe they get an, an extra pick. They're, they get the 31st pick in the first round. They, they just don't pick. care about that, though. Well, they don't. And, yeah. And it's so remote that it really, like, like who cares? Like, fans aren't going to really care either. Yeah. I don't know. Might stink. I, I think it's I think it's going to be bad, and I think I think a team that has no chance at winning the actual championship is going to win because contending teams won't really care. And you get a and they're like low managing remember, season anyway. Yeah. Do you do you remember how annoying Jazz fans used to be about like how they didn't get enough respect and stuff, and now they yeah. already blew up their whole team. But it's like oh like you know all the media only talks about like the Knicks, the Sixers, and the Lakers, and it was like yeah like people live there, and like to to have a team like that, like it won't be the Jazz this year, but like a, a team that like has annoying, you just know it's going to be a team with annoying fans that can't win the championship. That's like going to make the case that like, well, they were actually like the second best team that year, even though they lost in the first round of the playoffs because they won the midseason tournament. Yeah. And like, or it'll be like, you know, people, people aren't talking about the midseason tournament enough. Like it's a big deal. And like, no one, <laughs> no one's caring about it enough. And our team is doing well in it. Like, right. you know that that's going to like, like the like the Nuggets, it's going to be like Jokic should win the MVP for a third straight year because the Nuggets won the midseason tournament. And people are sleeping on Chris Duarte in the midseason tournament. Like it's just gonna, just, it's yeah. gonna have horrible implications on the NBA discourse. I am so yeah. sure of it, That's and true. I hate it. I think it's so dumb. Yeah. Um. All right, we're gonna go to break here, and uh, when we come back, we're gonna talk about the Eagles, and then we're gonna play a game with each other. Truth or dare, spin the bottle, tune in and find out. Here's a break. We're back. Dan, the Eagles play tomorrow. Uh, you're probably listening to this on the day that they play. So this conversation might be null and void. But if it is, nothing we can do about it. Too bad. Too bad. <laughs> this podcast is free, baby. <laughs> um, what do you think about the Eagles this year? I'm all jazzed up. And uh, much of the Delaware Valley is. And uh, it's very exciting that a lot of the uh, betting markets, meanwhile, what, 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 what app do you use there to, uh, to bet on? I use Facebook or DraftKings, whichever one I'm vibing you with. Time. I'm, I'm too lazy to, like, check the odds on both apps and then pick which. Like, I'll just be like, oh, I'm feeling today. I'm feeling DraftKings to open it. Actually, I don't think we can talk about this because uh, Liberty Bell is sponsored by DraftKings, so Drew might have to edit out the fan. I'm going to text you. All right. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm going to text you. Um, okay. I'm, uh, maybe maybe we can leave this, this in, but we'll bleep. All right. So, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have Drew add some bleeps. <laughs> all right, great. Um, I'll text you offline about this because I'm getting a little frisky this year. All right. All right. Um, how are you feeling about the birds this year? Uh, very good roster. Um, the uh, Chauncey Gardner, what's his last name? Johnson? No. Well, his last name is Gardner Johnson. Great. Uh, he's great. Talks a lot of shit, gets punched all the time. He's great. Um, just a very deep, good roster. A lot is hanging on uh, Jalen Hurts, of course. Um, but also just like uh, the schedule is not uh, among the toughest in the league, and um, uh, it's just a very exciting uh, feeling right now heading into the year. 
and um, would love to know how you're feeling. Yeah, um, I'm I'm very excited. I would be excited if I thought we were going to suck, though. But I don't think we'll sure. suck. I'm very excited uh, for the Eagles to be back. But I think the team could be really good. I think they have a chance to win the division. We'll see. I think people are um, kind of underestimating how good the Cowboys could be um, because they didn't do a lot this offseason and the Eagles did. Um, but the, the Cowboys were like by far the best team in the division last year. And I still think Dak is a really good player. So um, I'm not sure the Eagles should be favorites in the division. A lot of people are picking him though. And I think they have a real shot. I'm just not sure if they should be favorites. Um, I, I think that they could be really good. And it, a lot of it depends on Hertz. Um, possibly all of it depends on Hertz. Like he can't play how he played last year. Can, cannot. Right. Like last year, the Eagles, the Eagles had a talented roster last year too. And, you know, only made the playoffs because they added a seventh team. They were what nine and eight and got smoked in their first playoff game um, to a team that lost the next week. Like cannot, cannot play like that. He was really bad in the playoffs. He had, had a couple of really good games. His first game last year was really good. Um, it impressed me. Um, and I hope he can come out strong this year. I know he had an up and down training camp. It seemed to really end on a high note. Um, in the little bit we saw him in the preseason, I thought he looked good. Um, and like you said, he's, you know, he's a hard worker. He's a likable guy. So, you know, very easy to root for. Um, would love for him to show that he could be the guy. Definitely not sold, but we'll see. I mean, I think he's, but to put it this way, watching him last year, um, I thought he was basically interchangeable with, with Minshew. I was like, if, if like there was a week Hertz couldn't play and like I, Minshew, I thought did like the same thing, like not a lot of arm strength, like Minshew was more accurate, but couldn't really run. Um, this year, I think from what I've seen from Hertz, just in the little bit I've seen, he looks, he already looks much better than last year. He, his throws look more accurate and he looks, he looks more decisive, um, like be, better job knowing when to run, when not to run. Um, so I think he already looks like he's taking a step forward as you would expect for a guy who's a notoriously hard worker. Um, and who has, you know, he's only played one year, so he mm -hmm. has his rookie year under his belt. Um, I think it's going to come down to what he can do, but, um, I'm still not sold on like his arm strength, but if his accuracy can take a big step forward, that would be huge. And I think he's the clear QB one this year on the Eagles, right? Like there's no it, it, Minshew playing at this point would be a huge step back from Hertz. Um, I believe. And, uh, I'm excited to see what he can do. I, I haven't been the biggest Hurts believer, but I'm definitely rooting for him. And you know, he could he could do something good. I mean, he's he's a, he is a, he is a good runner. Like he's not just fast; he's a good oh, yeah. runner. Yeah. You know, he runs well, and you know, he the the locker room likes him, which is important. And I think the biggest thing has to be, you know, it, it has to be being more accurate. And we'll see we'll see how it how it works out. But I am excited, and I do think the Eagles could, you know, win the division, maybe win a playoff game. I don't see them like as Super Bowl contenders, but you know, we'll see. I I didn't see them as Super Bowl contenders at the beginning of the year when they won. So you know, anything can happen. It's the NFL; it's a short schedule, and they have talent. So it'll be um, it'll be exciting to see. Yeah, be a lot of fun. Um... People are talking about, you know, deepest roster since when? And uh, it's a good question, uh, especially since that 17 year, like it was before that leap that Wentz took. Like nobody expected Wentz to have that year that he had and then never had again. Like, you know, so that was a really good roster. And then, um, you know, we, we never knew that, that that kind of thing was going to happen. So, well, and the weird thing with that team was like, we didn't even think it was going to be that good of a roster, right? Like, no, like you had, um, you had Michael Kendricks having like his only great season. Yeah. You had, you know, Nigel Bradham was great. Um, Aguilar was really good that year. Aguilar had a really good year. Tori really Smith, good. like, you know, like, they Corey just... Clement was, was their leading receiver in the Super Bowl. He was an undrafted rookie. Right. Um, how about, um, um, Patrick Robinson was like, People were saying he should get cut. He like had a horrible preseason. Terrible. And was, was like the best best slot in the league. league. Yeah. Had the huge pick six in the NFC Championship game. Just like everything came together. Everyone played well. Unbelievable. It was an unreal year. Yeah. 
and they, yeah, they all I mean, that roster again. wasn't even that good. I mean, it was just one of those things that came yeah. together. You know, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. Um, Alshon obviously had a good year, and he was playing with the torn rotator cuff. I yeah, mean, he, uh, yeah. he was he was great that year, and he had a he, he had a great Super Bowl. He had the obviously the interception was kind of no one's fault. He batted up in the air, but he had the huge touchdown catch over Eric Rowe to kind of get yeah. him going. He had some other great catches too. So, yeah, great game, good times. Let's do that again this year. Let's win another one. I'd be, I'd be um, interested in that. I would be down. Uh, go Birds. All right. Um, what game? What game do you have there? I don't know. I could pull up a sporkle. Pull up a sporkle. Let's do it. Right, let's before we get out of here. We'll pull up a sporkle. Uh, let me share my screen with you, and you can Oof. pick a sporkle here. What? I have to. We have to watch an ad because I'm not paying for <laughs> ad-free sporkle. Are you kidding me? Oh, it's because I have an ad block on. Whatever. Um, Philadelphia seventy six ers trivia quizzes and games, all Let's time leaders, MVP votes. Which one is uh, floating your boat here? Here's some more also. Just not one of the super historical ones because I'm, uh, I'm only 21. 50 is. You're only 21? No, you, you look 18, but you're actually not only 21. I, let's see. Should we just do – let's do this. Yeah. Well, let's do the all-time leaders. Okay. All, so right. We have to, all right. We have to get their what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten all-time leaders and points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks in six minutes. All right. Here this we go. Be hard. All right. Let's start with Iverson, I guess. Uh, and All right. Iverson and just showed up in points, assists, and steals. Yep. And Bead showed up in blocks. Uh, we have Chamberlain. Will. Yep. Only rebounds. Oh, you know why? Because he was barely a sixer. He was a warrior. Um, all right. Who else? Uh, Mo Cheeks, I think, leads them in uh, assists and steals. Yep. And he's up there in points. Who's their all time hey, points leader? Try Willie Green. Of course, we'll try Willie Green because how could it not be Willie Green? Oh, okay. I can't believe it's not. Um, okay, so and B is not even in the top ten in points. Barkley has to be there. Um, who's yeah, their all-time leader in points? Up. Dolph They're Shays up there. Okay, so Dolph Shays is third in points. In up there in assists. Try Hal Greer. Hal, Hal, yep. Hal Greer is going to be Greer's their leader in points. Yep, Greer's second in assists. Good one. Um, who are we missing for rebounds? Who's between Shays and Barkley? Oh, probably no. Moses was barely on the team. Um, who else? Hmm. I'm sure Daniel Olinger could do this. Like yeah, you know, Olinger would be. He could just list them this. all off in he order. He would be flying through this. Yeah. Put in Matumbo, or Matumbo was here pretty briefly. I don't think he was here. Long. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who else? Was, oh, how about um, Cunningham? All right, Cunningham showed up in a few categories. Uh, who's their fourth all-time leader in points? We should be able to get that. Um, Would Iguodala be in there? Actually, I think he'd be up there. Yep, he's yeah. ninth in points. Okay. Um, uh, Andrew Tony? Nope, nothing. Um, who else was on the '83 team? We had uh, this thing. It was Cheeks, Mose. Oh, Irving. Irving. Oh, of course. Doctor J um, in there. Yep. Uh, who's second in rebounds? Could Ben be up there in steals? No. He's not. And Matisse wouldn't be. Not long ago. No. Um, oh, Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday wasn't here long enough either. Um, yeah, who was just Sixers that were just here forever? Um, yeah, that's what we need. We have, we have Andre we Miller wasn't long. here long enough, right? He was only here a couple of years. No, he wasn't here long enough. Yeah. Um, who else was from the 67 team? We had Billy Cunningham, Will Chamberlain. Uh, Doug Collins wasn't here long enough, right? Like I he don't think played, he played he got long hurt. enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Blocks were really slim on here. We are. We're almost halfway through here. We're not doing a, an impressive job. But we're also too young for this. So. Uh, That's true. How about, oh, um, Oh, oh my gosh! He, um, he died recently. Um, the Senate. Queen Elizabeth, <laughs> uh, Daryl Dawkins. Daryl Dawkins. Yeah. Dawkins. All right, Daryl okay, Dawkins. So in he's block. in blocks. Um, uh, people are screaming at their. IPhones. Oh, I know. We're doing terrible. Yeah. Um, oh, there's someone I'm thinking of, and I can't remember. Old player. Um, I don't know. 
Uh, it's bothering me that we can't get the second leading rebound here or blocker. Probably the same player. <laughs> who were six or centers who were here for a while? Mark Ivoroni. Matt Geiger. Neither. Can't believe it. Uh, Come on. Oh, how about for steals? Could it be Eric Snow? Yep, he's oh, tenth Snow's in steals. There. He's seventh in assists. McKee is McKee on here somewhere? Nope. Uh, Temple. Temple. Aaron McKee, Temple. Yeah. Um, Second in blocks and rebounds. This is so bad. We might have to cut all of this so we don't get embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, the thought it'll be twenty minutes long. Who is this? Come on, Steve. You're older than me. You should be carrying. You were around for the '83 team. I was. I remember. <laughs> so fun. Um, but we were on PCP at the time. Um. Henry Sims. Ah, uh, no. Um, that is young. Oh, nine. Okay. Steals. Do we think in that? What about um Jason Smith? Did he get on the board? Nope. Do you remember him? Yes, white guy. Balding. Yeah. Everyone hated him around the league. Oh, a ton. Um. All right, we're under a minute here. Uh. Any process sixers? Probably not. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think no. Uh, um, Alex Thompson, oh, he's on a three point list. Yeah, there's no three pointers on here. It's only points, yeah. rebounds, assists, deals, and blocks. Uh, I don't know. This is embarrassing. Who's come on? Rebounds, blocks. Half a minute left. Who was big in here for a while? Because we did that um, all time sixers article. For I know, recently. but that's cheating. But I know I'm missing some, and I'm thinking of someone too. I'm thinking of. A, a big guy. Um, ugh, there were so many obscure, but we also drafted a lot of guys who were here for like a year and just like really good because they only right right be here for a year. Uh, five, here we go. four, three, two, one. Let's see it. Red Kerr was second. Fuck is Red Kerr and eight, sixth and seventh. Okay, in points. Bobby Trent Jones. Walker, we should have had. Luke Samuel Jackson, Dallin I think, Bear. played on the Phillies. Samuel Dallenbear, Caldwell Jones is who I was thinking of. Theo Ratliff and Bobby Jones were two through five in blocks. We got none of them. Minute, we probably could have gotten at seventh in blocks. Clarence Weatherspoon at 10 in blocks. Steve Mix, Bobby Jones, Hersey Hawkins were five through eight. Or no, six through eight in steals. Larry Costello was eighth in assists. And Paul Seymour was 10th in assists. Samuel Dallenbear, Luke Jackson, Caldwell Jones were eight through 10 in rebounds. Sam Dallenbear, we should have had. Yeah. Um, should we do another? Uh, One more? I don't think so. No. That's, should we? What that was that? enough. I think that's probably 2010's good. top scores. All right. That we can do. This well, guy would probably minutes? be happy to tell you that Ben Simmons never made the li- this Ooh, list. The shade. Well, One time we met He didn't play that Samuel... much in the 2010s. Like, I'm not a Ben <laughs> guy, but that's not really his fault, is it? All right, the top 10. Oh, this is only two minutes. All right. Top 10 scores of 2010. Did we do this last week? We might have done this last week. Let's see if I. We definitely did this last week because it's by year. We already did it. Uh, All right. Uh, Can you name every Philadelphia All Star from the 2000s? Oh, God. It's every sport. No way. It's every sport. Absolutely not. Um, Joel and Bede trivia. How old was Joe when he started playing organized basketball? I think 16, right? He was 16. Yeah, he was 16. What draft year was indeed selected in? It was 2014, right? 15. 15? Eh. It was not 14. 14 was the first year of the process. No, 13 was, I thought. Oh, no. Well, 2012 13 was the last Doug Collins year. Then in the 2013 draft, they drafted Michael Carter Williams. And then the next year, they drafted. And beat in Sarge, right? Because there was a whole thing where oh, you might be right. Yeah. There's 2014. Nice. Come on. Well's nickname. All right. Here's is it the process? Brown Town, Hinky's Puppet, or Brother Joe? I'm gonna mm-hmm. go with the process here. Nice. What animal did Joe falsely claim to kill at age six? 
It was okay. a lion. Yeah. All right. Which songwriter helped him be learn English through his lyrics? I thought it was Future. He wrote Eminem like the candy. Uh, I don't know who made this one. Uh, do you have a? I don't think it's Kanye. I think it might be Rick Ross. I think it was Rick Ross. It was Rick Ross. What sport did Joe's father want Joe to play professionally? Volleyball. Yes. What popular singer has Joel Embiid been known for chasing? Rihanna. For chasing. Sounds terrifying. Yeah, it does. Which NBA player's basketball camp was MB discovered at? It was Mbamute. Luke Mbamute. Mbamute, yeah. What continent does Joe originate from? Africa. Right. And question 10. What pick was MB selected with? Third. All right, that was easy. All right, we All right. redeemed ourselves with a very easy one. After <laughs> yeah, we really uh, brought it back to our specialty, right? Now. Yeah. All right, very good, 100%. Averages are 70. I'm not sure which ones people are getting wrong. Probably the Rick Ross one. Um, yeah, I think so. All right, very good. We ended on a high note, so... Uh, we did. Let's call it. One time I met uh, Sam of uh Through a friend of a friend, I knew some rich kid who had a private basketball court. We played there, my friends and I, really late at night. Sam of Alibert showed up uh, randomly. He knew somebody, I don't know. This was... I don't know if he was playing for the Sixers at the time, but he showed up and was like shooting around with us and he drank a full bottle of red wine and that's when i met sam with that. was he a nice so, guy he was nice he was nice and he was uh he's doing fine i think i'm guessing i'm guessing uh if you played pickup his, his teams might not have lost well he didn't play pickup okay. he was just shooting around and okay. he was i remember him not, he didn't being enormous but also not playing that well and i was just like mm. i think he should be playing better but he was also yeah, it was a bottle of wine. Not quite sober. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Thanks for listening. The off-season trudges on. Uh, Gastro Blues Pod, Third and Girl, DA Pelt 13, uh, Steve J. Lippman. The Gastro Blues, a Sixers podcast on YouTube. Go ahead and watch it on YouTube. You would watch this sporkle as we're doing it, and you'll be able to uh, enjoy it. Uh, Red, one thing. Uh, shout uh, out Red Kerr. Go ahead. The pod comes out tomorrow, I believe, right? Yeah. Um, tomorrow is September 11th, 35 days from October 16th, which is the first Sixers regular season game. In the How about 35 that? days, that's barely over a month. That's why I didn't even realize. Yeah, it's, it's sooner than we think. Sooner than we think. So start, start getting ready yourself it. ready. Start getting yourself ready. We're rolling out a lot of new stuff this year, so get ready. No. no, we're not. Um, I don't know. I figured I'd put it out there. No, All right. There's pressure on us to do that. All right. Maybe, All right. maybe we will now. Maybe we will now. We love you. And uh, thanks for listening. And, and go ahead and have yourself a great day. Uh, go, birds. And be safe and be great. See ya.